Tomorrow is an historic day for Brisbane Raw, the first time that they'll appear in the Asian Champions League and they go into the match with a big expectation, certainly from the Australian footballing public. Uh, Please to say I'm joined now by Ange Postacoglu. Ange, thanks for taking the time to speak to us on the World Game. No, looking forward to it, Scott. As I alluded to there, this is uh, it's a bit of expectation on you guys. I mean, uh, this is probably the first time we've seen an Australian club head into the Champions League with the bulk of the squad uh, that actually got them there. Uh, and in your case, maybe you've even strengthened in a couple of uh, uh, key areas as well. Uh, do you feel that pressure? Oh, no, I mean, I think it's what we needed it to be. Um, I think if you look at the history of Australian clubs in the, in the Champions League, uh, most have struggled to back up. And uh, I guess it's the way the A-League's designed. And... Yeah, you know, one thing qualifying for it, but we were we were pretty um, you know dead set on making sure that when it came around that we were, a we we're in good form. We need to be playing well, good position in the A League, and hopefully having strengthened the squad. And you know we 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 lost a few players, some key players last year, but I think we we, we replaced them quite well. As I said, the key thing is we we're in good form. Um, you know we've. We are undefeated in five now. The last month we've played some really good football and that was the key for us, so it gives us a good chance. You say you replaced them uh, well. In, if you look at the goal-scoring charts, you replaced them more than well. Brish has almost got twice as many uh, goals as anyone else in the A-League this season. You lost uh, uh, Matty and, uh, and John Collis went down to, uh, to Melbourne as well. But w was part of the recruitment strategy that, that you were targeting this competition and, uh, and the A-League that you knew the, the kind of player that you might have needed to go into Asia? Oh, I think so. I mean, we like I said, we, we lost Matty McKay, obviously, and, and you know, especially up front because we lost John Carlos, we lost Costa Barbarousas. I mean, they both scored 12 goals for us each last year, so there was a lot of goals we lost. So, you know, we had to replace, and I thought we had to replace it with experience, and, and it was a reason, you know, we targeted somebody like Bessard, who, you know, he's a seasoned professional, and, and you know, he, he had the right attitude. We knew that he could play every game. He's, he's, he works hard at training, and, you know, my, the report, scouting reports I had on him was that, you know, he, he gives it all in games, and we, we knew he kind of needed that kind of player, and obviously a goal scorer, you know, he, scoring goals is the key thing, but it's not just that, it's his overall game. And I think the way he plays... It will transfer well even into the Champions League because I think, you know, it doesn't give opposition defenders uh, a moment's rest and, and it kind of fits in with, with our style of football that, you know, we like to press oppositions and, and, and make sure that we keep them honest and uh, so, you know, with the recruiting at the start of the year and even, you know, big Mohammed at the back, you know, he's already got you know, experience playing quite regularly against Asian teams and, uh, you know, there's definitely an eye on this competition when we, we're kind of putting the team together. We've seen uh, in, a, in a couple of previous ACL campaigns where sides have gone in maybe trying to play uh, a very similar way to, to that in which they played uh, in the A-League, uh, taking that across to continental football. Uh, have you had a thought about that, whether it worked maybe in the case of, uh, say, Melbourne and Sydney and, and Adelaide? And, and what's your thinking? Are you going out to, to play the way that you have in the A-League or do you know that you might need to tweak a few things uh, heading into Asia? Oh, look, I, I mean, I, it's hard for me to comment on the other clubs because, I mean, you know, I think, uh, and a lot of them, you know, were going into the competition, I think, probably not playing their best football, which I think is a little bit different from what we're doing. But certainly our philosophy right from the start has been to play our style of game, you know, regardless of, of what competition we're playing in. I think anyone who's watched us play the last two years, there's certain things we've become known for, and that is, you know, dominating possession and, and, and you know, really pressurising oppositions and, and scoring a lot of goals and you know if, if I kind of went into this tournament now thinking well we better try and maybe rein that back a little bit I, I think you're kind of admitting defeat now you know, a lot of people have said that our style of football probably may not work in this competition and it might be better to play a you know a more organised counter attacking style but you know if it doesn't work at least I know where we're at as a football club and, and I'm prepared to, to roll the dice on that and, and, and really challenge our guys to try and play you know can we dominate possession and play the, play the style of football we play in the A-League against good quality opposition. If we can, great. It means we're, we're, we're developing. If we don't, then uh, you know, it gives me more work to do in the training track. It's a tough group, but uh, by no means is it an insurmountable one. Surely the target is uh, a top two finish getting out and then uh, take things uh, as they come from there. Yeah, you know, I think from our point of view, I, I, I'd be really happy if we can like I said, if we can transfer what we do in the A-League to, to, to the ACL, it, it is a tough competition, there's no doubt about it. When you look at, you know, the, the distances travelled, and, and it's the same for, for, you know, I mean, speaking to Ranko Popovic, you know, he said, you know, it's it's crazy, they flew overnight and arrived Monday morning, and it does, it takes its toll. So it, it's very hard to juggle both competitions. And, uh, you know, if you start setting yourself targets in terms of results, then I think it defeats the purpose of what we want to do. We obviously, you know, we play in the A-League to win the competition, and we're going to the Champions League to try and win that competition, but 
but the essence of what we do is to make sure that we play as well as we possibly can in our way more importantly. I think that'll be I'll get just as much enjoyment or pleasure out of seeing us maybe dominate an opposition team, you know, as good as say FC Tokyo as I will out of the result. You, you touched on it uh, earlier on uh, last December, Kashwa Rainsall and Al Saad, the Qatari uh, sides there in the Club World Cup. Uh, you're telling us you were dreaming at that time. What was the dream, and uh, and is it an impossible one? Well, no, it's not. I mean, that's. I mean, they were playing Al Saad. Yeah, you're right. You correct me. They're Barcelona, and I just thought, well, why couldn't they be an A League team? You know, why, why? I mean, you know, I was part of. You know, I was coaching South Melbourne. We played Manchester United, and uh, you know, at at, at the Maracanã. So um, you know, I, I reckon if I told people that, or even Vasco da Gama, they they would have said I was crazy back then. So you got a dream, you know, and, and that's the beauty of our sport. You can, you know, you can have those dreams, you know. The game goes beyond our borders, and uh, there are no limits. I mean, you know, it's it's a global game, and if things go your way, you could end up, uh, you know, playing Barcelona in in a World Club Championship. So wouldn't that be great? It'd be great for the country. It'd be great for everyone involved. Um, so yeah, look, I, you know, I've I've sat in a press conference next to Sir Alex Ferguson, and uh, you know, and you know, if I told people that uh, beforehand, they, they they'd look at me pretty crazy. So football's been. Fantastic journey for me and uh, continues to be. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep dreaming big. The squad uh, and, and rotation, the A-League, the ACL, two fronts, uh, you, you touched again uh, earlier on how to build the travel uh, aspect of it is. In one sense, you've uh, been kind of fortunate this week with Enrique's suspension that he didn't play the week and he's coming back fresh. Uh, on the other hand, you lost uh, Mitch. How, uh, how big a, a thought is rotation for these two tournaments and, and how much are you targeting one over the other? Yeah, no, that, that's going to be probably the biggest challenge. Hopefully we've, we've prepared well for it. Not hopefully, I mean, we believe we have. Um, as I said, if you, if you see our training sessions on a Tuesday and Wednesday, they were uh, sometimes harder than the game. And I, and I think that, that probably, you know, cost us a little bit during the season in the A-League. But we, we, we wanted to prepare the players to play two games a week. And uh, hopefully, we, we, you know, we've got a squad that's capable of doing that. And there's no doubt we're going to have to rotate at some point. Um, as you said, you know, we, we missed Ricky on the weekend. I, you know, prefer he play because if he was playing, he'd take the penalty and we'd be two points better off. But, uh, you know, the fact that he didn't means he is fresh for tonight. And, you know, Mitch will probably miss uh, for tomorrow night. Mitch will probably miss, which hopefully it's nothing too serious and he can be right for Saturday. But there will come a point where we're going to have to look at the squad and start uh, hopefully rotating, but not, not to the extent where, it, again, it, it detracts from our game. And, and in terms of priority, uh, you know, our priority is trying to play... And I keep saying it, but it, it's it's what we believe in our style of football in every game we play. One of the good things about Japanese football is they've got these cute slogans, uh, each club. Uh, the slogan for FC Tokyo this year is COA, Collective uh, Offensive Attacking Football, which is uh, rather a mouthful. But uh, in some sense, it, it, sums well, up, <laughs> it, it sums up the way that, that you guys play as well. Uh, I mean, it, it could be a clash of two real uh, similar footballing philosophies tomorrow. What, what are you expecting and, and uh, how much do you know about FC Tokyo and how do you go about breaking them down? No, it would be great if it is. Um, yeah, you know, obviously we, we did a little bit of... Uh, reconnaissance on, on the way they played last year but they've changed a bit obviously some of their personnel have been promoted and yeah we had Rado Vitisic on the weekend watching them play against Kashua and uh, you know I've watched the game a couple of times now and you know they're a good side you know technically very good and, and, and very attacking you're right you know and uh, which is great I mean uh, hopefully that means it's, it's going to be a great spectacle for supporters because I, I don't think they'll they'll change I, th I think they'll definitely have a, an offensive mindset and it's certainly part of our culture here. I mean, I think maybe it's the one thing that, that hasn't been highlighted as often, but, you know, we haven't sat on a 1-0 lead or a 2-0 lead all year, you know, and it's not just us coming from behind, but even when we're winning, we still try and get extra goals and, uh, you know, we're going to take again that through to the, the ACL and hopefully it means some excitement, you know. As I said, the, the key indicator for how well we're going is the goals we score and uh, if we're scoring goals, it usually means we're winning games of football and, and usually playing the, you know, the, the style we want. Oscar we thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us at SBS and we wish you all the best for tomorrow and the, the rest of the campaign. Thanks, Scott. <laughs>